MasterChef has come to Ireland in search of the country's top amateur chefs. A gruelling process of challenges that will push each contestant to their very limit. It's the ultimate in cooking. And judging will be two of Ireland's foremost culinary figures. Michelin-starred chef Dylan McGrath. It'll be really interesting to see what sort of talent is out there. And restaurateur Nick Mounier. To be able to sort of take and nurture these home amateur cooks, but turn them into chefs. Now, that is what I'm really excited to do. From over a 1,000 applicants, the top 50 have been chosen to battle it out to get one of the coveted 16 aprons. And a chance to win €25,000 if they become Ireland's first ever MasterChef champion. Nick, we have no idea what's going to walk through that door. It's the first day of the MasterChef auditions, and from around the country, amateur cooks and their friends and families converge on Dublin. Platon for a mission star chef and Platon for one of the best restaurateurs in the business. What more could I want to do out of a day, really, to be honest with you? They will each have to cook a dish of their choice for Nick and Dylan. It would be like Dylan McGrath going into a Michelin star inspector, cooking in front of that Michelin inspector. That's what it's like for me. A yes from each judge means a coveted MasterChef apron and an automatic place in the next round. Two no's and they are gone. But one yes and one no means they will return tomorrow for the cook-off. I'm always looking for someone with a little bit of magic, a hard worker and dedicated. I'm looking for a great cook, conscientious, hard-working, who knows what they're doing and has a palate to match. But with only 16 aprons available and just 55 minutes to impress, competition will be fierce. Really hope we're impressed. We will be. Let's face it, over the next couple of days, the very first winner of MasterChef Ireland is going to walk through those doors. First up to cook for Nick and Dylan is 45-year-old Mandy, a PA from Dublin. I'm a home cook. I cook for my family and children. I love doing dinner parties and planning them, but it's a competition. I'm going to cook simple food, well, all with a bit of a twist. So you're our very first MasterChef Ireland contestant. Are you nervous? Yes. I'd be lying if I didn't say I was. Mandy, you're very welcome. Thank you. What are you going to cook for us today? I'm cooking a vitello tonato. Well, you have 45 minutes to cook and 10 minutes to plate and clean up. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Mandy is hoping to impress with her Italian summer dish of cold veal with tuna flavoured mayonnaise. She loves cooking, always has liked cooking from the time she was a kid. I was the, the chef and Mandy was the helper. She was the only one he'd allow in the kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> the only one. I, I wouldn't even let my wife in the same kitchen with me. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. Yep. <laughs> with Mandy's mayonnaise relying on eggs boiled to the right consistency, there's no room for error. Next up is 32-year-old Australian Toby, who's been living in Galway for less than a year. What are you going to cook for us today, Toby? Uh, pork and prawn dumplings. You've got uh, 45 minutes to cook. Yep. And an extra 10 minutes to plate up. Fantastic. Good luck, Toby. Thank you very much. Cheers. Food's been a, a big part of my life, and I'd like to take it a bit further and see what I can do, I suppose. So, yeah, that's a bit, a bit of a challenge which I'm looking forward to. This is going to be a pork and prawn dumpling, is it? That's right, steamed. And how are you going to present them? Due to a slight technical error this morning, I left some Chinese cabbage behind, so <laughs> it's time for plan B. So I, I won't show any more. Good luck, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of moments, all right? Excellent. Thank you Cheers, very much. Cheers, Toby. You're welcome. Cheers. Mandy, you have 10 minutes to plate up clean down your workstation. Mm -hmm. 
Mandy has cooked vitello tonato, an Italian dish of veal with tuna and caper mayonnaise, served with tomberry tomatoes, quail eggs with truffle oil, and a salad with edible flowers. I think you've shown some real ability today. I'm not sure if the cold feel is my cup of tea, but I think you've shown real technique here today. You should be very proud, so it's, it's a yes from me. Thank you very much. That is fantastic. Thank you. Stunning food. I'm glad very you good. like it. Stunning food. I'm glad you like it. Which means only one thing. We're gonna have to take that apron off you <laughs> and give you a nice white one over here. Well, I'm delighted. So I'm delighted to say. I'm glad, thank you very great, much. Great, great. Absolutely delighted. Right. Well thank, done, you. Mother. thank you. Wear it with pride. <laughs> that was very good, wasn't it? The entry and everything is beautiful now. <laughs> you do it. You do it. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really excited, very happy, and yet still nervous. <laughs> Toby, you have 10 minutes left. With Mandy through to the next round, there are now just 15 places left. Okay. Toby has made steamed pork and prawn dumplings with two dipping sauces of soy ginger and sweet chili. I don't feel you've pushed yourself quite as far okay. as, you, as you could have done today. Right. I think that you've opted for fairly easily executed flavours. Some nice flavours coming through. For me, it's not great, OK? okay? Um, it's a no from me. It's certainly not at the MasterChef level that we're at now, and uh, for that reason, it's a no for me. OK, Sorry, thank you very much. Thank you. Toby, thanks, thanks very much. Thanks, Toby. OK, cheers, thanks. Thanks, so much. thanks Toby. Thank you. Tough, isn't it? it is tough. I mean, it's okay for maybe a dinner party, but not. Yeah, not, not at this level. No. Well, such is life. <laughs> Next in is 49 year old Joe, who's the manager of a country house hotel in Dunlavin, County Wicklow. What are we doing here, Joe? Uh, we're panicking now for the minute because I can't. Oh, here, I have it. Uh, I've lost my little piece. I just want to do a little stripe on that. Uh, we're doing a little bit of lamb. And you're not going to seal any of the lamb, no? No. I, I, you could do, but this is going to be just much nice, much gentler. Cooking lamb in three ways, Joe's timing is key to the success of this dish. OK, Joe, you need to present your dish. Good God, what do I do with the asparagus? There it is. Joe, we have to push on this dish. Coming. Two seconds, just two seconds. Joe, we need the food, please. Coming up. Just let me put the sauce on. I found everybody else, Joe. And we're done. Coming up. On the way. OK. Joe has prepared roast chump of lamb, coated in a rosemary herb mix, served on a bed of cannellini beans. Roast strip loin of lamb coated in a mint herb mix and a seasoned fillet of lamb served on a bed of asparagus. Cooked. No sauce to it, is there? For me, Joe, I find overall the herbs very strong, very overpowering. I just find it very pungent, very, very, very strong. It, it, it seems to overpower a lot. The, it, it seems a bit messy. It's a very poor attempt. And um, at this level, we can't. Um, it's fair enough, thank you anyway. Can't take you through. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Joe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Seems such a shame to take all of that meat and um, do all of that um, aggressive work and, and not it. get anywhere. He's completely blown it. I know I could do it, but I just just overcomplicated a simple dish, I think. 
others who didn't make the grade included 19-year-old journalism student Emma with her chocolate lava cake and poached pear. It's not as good as it should be at all. Right. It's a, it's a definite no from me, yeah. Emma. 31-year-old Alice with her quail scotch egg, warm quail salad and walnut vinaigrette. I just find it a bit boring. OK. For me, it's a no. OK. All right. 27-year-old Fabio with his homemade tagliatelle and rocket pesto, skeeter sun-dried tomatoes and edible gold flakes. Fabio, I find this very um, contrived and it, it doesn't work, unfortunately, at all. For that reason, it's a definite no. And 41-year-old Nick made crisp skinned halibut with spiced chickpea mash, chorizo and caponata. Too many things going on, too many flavours, and you've lost it for me. Okay. So for me, Nick, it's a no. And a long afternoon without a yes. Let's keep the faith. I'm sure there's somebody else out there. I hope so. Somewhere. 23-year-old au pair Miana moved to Ireland three years ago from Mauritius and dreams of one day opening her own restaurant. My dad is a chef and he's my great influence in cooking. He always takes me little by little and shows me how step by step how to do things. Miana is hoping to secure the second apron with her spicy Mauritian dish of salmi of beef. What do you think we're looking for in this competition? I think even if you're given two ingredients, you'd have to get something out of it. If you're a real chef, you'll get it. Even a sauce, even a little dip, you'd have to get something out of it. Yeah. I think you've got a great attitude. Thank you. We we'll look so forward much. to tasting your food. But with time running out, disaster strikes. Thanks a lot. Thank you. But can she make up for vital last minutes? Vienna, you have ten minutes to plate up and clean down your station. Your dish is ready, you can, you can bring it up, please. Miana has made fillet of beef with a salmi sauce of cinnamon, chilies, star anise and garlic, served with watercress mashed potato and thyme roasted asparagus. That's she very good. Wonderful flavours coming through. The only thing I would say is it's slightly oily. Yeah. But in all, shows you have potential. And it's a yes from me. Is that some, is that some butter paper? I think it is, is it? I think that the, the consistency of the mashed potatoes is good. I think they're a little bit bland. I, I do think this is a good flavor, but I'm not sure if anything else stands up to it because there's so much of it and it's so strong. So that, that, that leaves me with a no, a definite no. Even your eye for detail, which should be there at this level. If I say no and Nick says yes, then we'll invite you back tomorrow and try again. We're expecting you to come back with something that's going to show that you have more ability to balance a dish. Good luck. See you tomorrow. See you, See you tomorrow. tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, Miana. Thank you. Bye. You can see your talent, but mm. it's just that's not master show. <laughs> I'm kind of happy because it's not a no, no. At least it's a second chance, and I'll do whatever I can to try and get it. With only one person to make it through so far, is 44-year-old Richard the man to secure the next MasterChef apron? This combination means absolutely everything to me. So I'm really looking forward to it. But um, I just, just hope you like the dish. Richard is hoping to impress with pan-fried venison and his own roasted beetroot risotto. However, 
with six separate elements to his dish, will he be able to bring all the flavors together in time? How are you? A little bit nervous, lots to do. I can see that, actually. You've given yourself a tall order today. Yeah, I have, but uh, I think, you know, there's, there's no point coming in here and, you know, not showing what you can do. Well, we won't, we won't distract you too much, because it seems like you have a lot to do. I do have a lot to do. Yeah. OK, OK, thanks Appreciate a million, Richard. Thanks, Good luck. If he got through today, he would just really be thrilled. He eats, sleeps and breathes food, and it would just mean the world to him. You have ten minutes left. Thank you. Richard, I see you're finished. Will you please present your dish to us? Absolutely. Thank you. Richard has cooked pan-fried venison on a bed of roasted beetroot risotto, served with a blackberry reduction, celeriac and apple puree, glazed carrots and parsnip crisps. You happy with the cooking of the venison? Slightly over. More and more medium rare than rare. I think that you did run into trouble a little bit with the cooking of the venison. I think I think that you have really captured the, the the earthiness of the beetroot in your in your risotto. It, you've kept that deep red colour. Uh, for my mind, Richard, there's no doubt you can cook. I think uh, you're a definite yes for me. You make me cry now, wish please. <laughs> That'll be sweetness from the sauce. Fruit risotto is actually fantastic. It's beautiful. And I love your food, so it's a 100% yes. Thank you very much. Pleasure. That means absolutely everything to me. You're welcome. That really does. You've done yourself very proud today, and you deserve this. Thank you very much indeed. Great. Thanks very much. Well. Pleasure. Take care. Thank you, Richard. Bye-bye, Richard. <laughs> you think he's happy? <laughs> Jeez, that was fantastic, wasn't it? Oh, he's great, isn't he? Just thought you were going to cry then. <laughs> My God. To have professional uh, chefs say that your food is really good and that you show an awful lot of potential, that really is, I mean, it's amazing. I'm really, really happy. <laughs> it's day one of the Master Chef auditions. And out of 16 coveted aprons and an automatic place in round two, just 14 remain. Each person is fighting to prove their culinary worth to restaurateur Nick Mounier and Michelin star chef Dylan McGrath. So far, only Mandy and Richard have been successful. Does 40-year-old South African Grant have what it takes to secure the next MasterChef apron? Uh, what's your name? Uh, Grant. And um, what are you going to cook for us today? Kangaroo. With a... Kangaroo. Kangaroo, that's it, yep. OK. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. OK, good luck. Thank you. Skippy for dinner. I'll tell you. My dream's always to open a restaurant, but life, family, jobs, mortgage gets in the way, and all of a sudden, what was your dream becomes a hope, and then literally does become something I could have done. Right now, I'm at the crossroads, and this is the, the opportunity I'd say to kickstart me again. Is this your sort of signature dish, is it? Or? One of them. <laughs> and tell me, I'm intrigued, where did you get your kangaroo from? Long story, almost didn't have it at all. I was that close to going to Dumbledore Zoo, actually. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it jumps in my mouth, so anyway, yeah, enjoy it, and I'll see you later. Thank you. Thanks, Grant. Thank, thank you. His dream is to own his own little cafe. This is going to be, you know, it's a step towards potentially, hopefully one day, making that dream a reality. This is great for him, he's absolutely buzzing. Grant, are you ready? Present your dish. I am. Here you go. Fight of drunken roux. Grant has cooked fillet of kangaroo, served with the red wine and cherry sauce, carrot puree, vegetable crisps, and a potato fondant.
The potato is cooked perfectly and the seasoning of the meat is there and the meat has been executed properly. I, I, I just feel that in places it's been let down. The carrot puree is, is quite lumpy. Yep. Um, the crisps are maybe not as crispy. But um, I think you've shown real potential here. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna take a gamble on you. I'm gonna go on a yes for you. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Brilliant, thank you. I want you not to let me down. No, no, no. For me, there's too much going on. I don't particularly like it. Okay. So I'm gonna say no. That's fair enough. Yeah. Right, That's fine, it's a shame. One yes and yep. one no. Yep. You're gonna have to come back. Yep. Um, you definitely can cook, yep. and there's an understanding there. Yep. But you, you need to learn how to refine it. Yes. Now look forward to it. Thank so I'm, I'm hoping you can convince us both. And so do I. Great. Good Thank night. you, guys. Right. Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks, Grant. Thanks, Grant. Thanks, Grant. You need to come back. <laughs> okay. uh, one yes, one no. Okay. Mm. Oh, love. If he learns his mistakes, he could have potential. Oh, completely. It's hard to just... let that walk out the door. I think I overreached on this one. I'm a show off by nature, unfortunately. I try to show off on a plate, and you don't do that in, in, the, in the caliber of, of Nick and Dylan. With Grant having to return tomorrow, 29-year-old Sinead is hoping to make the grades straight away with her Asian wonton soup. This is your favorite food to cook, is it? I love the flavors of Asian food. The only thing that's missing from this is chili, because I'm mental on chili, and I didn't want to burn the cups off yesterday. today. What do you do, Sinead? I stay at home with little girl. Not by choice now, at the moment, of course. But, you know, she's seven now, so I'm, I'm looking into to getting out and doing something for myself now, you know? Lads, just mind if I jump back into this? Thanks, Sinead. Cheers, lads. Thank you. Thank so you. Much job. Day. So uh, hopefully she does well. She does great, actually. Sinead, you now have 10 minutes left. <laughs> Sinead has made pork-based Asian soup with pork and prawn wontons. Personally, it looks very inviting. I love the colors. You want me to eat it like this? I bought one of these for. It's quite some kick to the soup, isn't there? Have you a vinegar in there? There is, yeah. It's rice wine vinegar. Mm -hmm. it, it's too much. It's too much. Too it's, heavy handed, it's too, it's too, yeah, without a doubt. You haven't balanced it with any sweetness at all to react to the fact that it's so sharp. I actually don't want to take another spoonful, and, and I mean that with the utmost. No, it's just yeah. the balance isn't there. Yeah. Um, and your seasoning is what you really need to work on. Okay? So for me, it's a no. I was actually really looking forward to be wowed. It just doesn't deliver. I just don't think I can take you through, so it, it is a no from me. Back next year with a bit more knowledge, just didn't get the balance of flavours right. Oh, okay. And as the hours pass, the MasterChef dream ends for more people. 29-year-old caricaturist Matt failed to impress with his miso-covered monkfish on a bed of braised lime cabbage with a miso-lime paprika sauce. It's all very strong. I don't think you've understood how to use the miso, so for me, it's a, it's a definite no. Okay. Very disappointed. Yeah. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm pretty gutted, so... Stay-at-home mum Fiona was unsuccessful with her lamb wrapped in a potato rosti, red wine and rosemary reduction, dauphinoise potato and pea and mint puree. The rosti should be much crispier. All right. Um, the pea puree is too much cream. Fiona, for me, it's a no. And 20-year-old Aaron's Lebanese lamb, fadouche salad and aioli failed to get him an apron. It's a good basic idea. This is not strong enough to put you through. 
I'm just gonna keep enjoying food and cooking. And, you know, who knows what'll happen. With half the day gone and only two aprons given out, 28-year-old business manager Mary will have to prove her bacon, cauliflower and scallop dish can reach Nick and Dylan's exacting standards. I like to eat what I cook and I think it's tasty and I think I've got a good palate. I think my downfall can sometimes be I get, you know, maybe a bit overambitious and I try to do too much. You know, I enjoy what I do now, um, but food is my passion, so if I could get, get into that area, that would be, that would be a dream come true. Okay, Mary, you've got 10 minutes left. She's nearly serving bacon in two ways. Yeah. And cauliflower in two yeah, ways. Clever. Which is clever. It's very clever. Hoping to triumph with her flavor and texture combinations, can she present a dish with real finesse? Okay, Mary, bring your dish up. Mary has made pan-fried scallops served on a bed of cauliflower puree and topped with a smoked bacon mousse, surrounded by roasted hazelnuts, Romanesco cauliflower florets, bacon bits and grated parmesan. Presentation fantastic. Great. Beautiful. Looks amazing. Absolutely fantastic, beautiful. That, for me, is the dish of the day. Wow. 100% <laughs> yes. Fantastic. You've shown some real understanding that you're trying to balance two textures of cauliflower together. You've, you've also added two dimensions of bacon as well and then you've brought it all together with hazelnut. You're exactly what this competition is looking for. So for me, it's a definite yes, and I think you really, really, really deserve this. Very well done. Thank you. <laughs> well done, Mary. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Top marks. Glad you enjoyed us. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Keep Thank it up, Mary. Thanks a lot. How cool was she? Fabulous. That's fantastic. Wasn't it? Yeah, really we good. got one. Fantastic. I can't believe it. <laughs> they really liked it. I'm delighted with what they said. I'm just kind of concerned now that I've, I've maybe set the bar too high for myself and that I won't be able to keep it up. And with Mary safely through to the next phase of the competition, soon others followed. Like 28-year-old journalist and food writer Nadia. Do you write for um, anyone we know? Um, probably not. It's uh, one of the food magazines in Denmark. I'm from Denmark. Her dish of pan-fried scallops in a lobster sauce with a pea puree and a parmesan crisp was a big hit with the judges. It's a beautiful dish. It's a yes from me. It tastes fabulous. And it's a yes from me. Thank you. I am so relieved and happy and... Like, I just can't even describe it, you know. It's just, you know, for a writer, that's pretty bad. <laughs> And 21-year-old architectural student Christine, wowed with her fillet steak on a bed of creamed white beans and leek with a side of rosemary and lemon-scented chips. She's been tasting along the way. Very clean the way she works. Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, she has a really. great potential. I kind of grew up in a restaurant. I would always love watching chefs. I would have so much respect for them. And I know that food and this whole industry is what I want to do. It's a well-executed dish, nicely balanced. That is a definite yes for me. The beef is cooked perfectly, but I can, I can definitely see a talent in you. And, I, and I'm delighted you're in the competition, and it's a definite yes for me as well. Fantastic, thank you so much. Well really done. Brilliant, thank you very much. Yay! <laughs> I can't believe it. Food is something which I love and I'm passionate about. This could take me a completely different path, a path which I kind of want to take now at this stage, so. Hopefully. <laughs> no, it's too big for me. <laughs> no, I love it. Oh, my God. With five aprons now given out, so far Richard has been the only man to have made it through. And after having a tough year, 26-year-old Dubliner Gavin is hoping to be the second. We were meant to go for six, six months around the world trip to Vietnam, but um, unfortunately my wife Marlena fell very ill in Vietnam. My mother's not well, my dad's had a couple of operations. It's just been a kind of tough year. I thought this was the chance to change that.
How you doing? Not too bad. Hi, Gavin. What do you do for a living? Um, at the moment, I'm a, a, a waiter and an assistant restaurant manager. I spend more time in the kitchen than I would in the bar, kind of asking the chef what was in that sauce and what's in that sauce. And sure. well, why didn't you do that full time? If you're passionate about food, why didn't you actually just go into the kitchen? I, I, I know a lot of older chefs who just seem to not be the happiest people. But then I've met a couple of chefs. He's happy. He's no, but I've met a couple of chefs since who they've kept their passion for what they're doing. So um, that kind of inspired me a bit, you know. Absolutely. Gav to get a yes. I think it means more for me. Because of me, we had to cancel our biggest property adventure of our life. So hopefully, this is the good thing that might happen to him. Gavin, you have 10 minutes to plate up and clean down your station. Thank you. Gavin has made fillet steak with asparagus and a Bernays sauce, sautéed spinach, mashed potato with vanilla, and a garnishing of fresh thyme. What you've done here is picked a very sort of a, a, a simple dish and, and then put a little twist on it with the vanilla mash. Cooking of the beef is done correctly. I, I have to say, though, the vanilla you've used is, is very strong. And, and the, the basic seasoning of the mash is not, is not very good. You've decided to put a load of thyme leaves all the way around, and instead what you've done is blown all the flavor, I feel. Um, so for me, it's a, it's a no, unfortunately. Nice piece of meat. But it's very dry. Mm. Oh, it's too dry, too dry. And the spinach, again, is lacking flavor. It's a shame because you use simple ingredients and you haven't really enhanced their flavors. So for me, it's a no. I do think, though, that, that, that you have ability. I just think that you really need to start tasting your food and really understanding what it is you're cooking and why you're putting these ingredients together on a plate. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks very much. Good man. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. That's fair. That's very fair. Mixture, eh? Yeah. After a grueling first day of MasterChef auditions, Nick and Dylan have so far only given out five aprons. With 25,000 euro in prize money at stake and the honor of becoming Ireland's first amateur MasterChef, the standard has been high. One of the last to audition is 40-year-old Mark, who currently works in IT. I've always had the ambition and the desire to do something with food. I have a talent, but it just needs to be nurtured and, 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 and caressed. And I, I enjoy my career now, but it doesn't make my heart smile. Good afternoon, gentlemen. And what's with the chef's jacket? Well, I do a lot of dinner parties at home, and I like to look the part. It also gets me in, it, it focused on what, what I achieve in, in the, the, the home environment. I like to get the whole focus about it. Cooking lobster in three ways, Mark has left little room for error. Puts a lot of pressure on himself. I mean, he just wants to do Michelin star standard, or it's not good enough for him. But with the pressure on, can Mark overcome his nerves? How long have I left? Five more minutes. Time to get changed. Mark has made lobster ravioli with a saffron and caviar dressing, lobster and champagne risotto served in a lobster tail, and lobster thermidor in an Iberico ham basket. You've done an incredible amount of work and you've pushed very hard. I think your execution, even though it looks very pretty and you've designed very pretty food, it, that's where it falls down the most. Mm. I'm not sure if it gels together. OK. Um, for me, I think the uh, risotto is too dry. All I'm tasting from the ravioli is the caviar. 
I would have just preferred maybe one of the three dishes there on the plate. So you're giving yourself more time, being easier for yourself, and then the flavors you look got completely right. So for me, it's a no. But there's no doubt that you have push uh, and ability and innovativeness, and, and I respect that. That it's, 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 it's a, a crazy definite yes for me. Well, thank you very much. All right. I appreciate that. That puts us in a position where if Nick says no and I've said yes, that you're given an opportunity to come back to just cook well one thing. OK? All right. Thank you, man. Thanks a lot, thank Mark. You. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. I'm going to do one dish. I'm going to do it to the best of my capabilities. Not overcomplicate it and deliver a tasty dish cooked to perfection. Master chef. Master chef, yeah. Mark wasn't the only one to split the judges. 35-year-old Anne-Marie made a deconstructed beef wellington with a mushroom duck cell served with horseradish mashed potato that divided opinion. It's slightly bland for me. All right. A bit weak. Yeah. Bit runny. Yeah. I think your duck cell is very good. I think you 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 have the potential to develop. Okay. So for me, it's a definite yes. Okay. I actually would like you to come back and cook tomorrow for us again. Prove to us again tomorrow. You've got to steady yourself okay. and prove you can handle the pressure because yeah. because we think you can. So to come back and to actually get through would be just a dream come true. Like it's something I've wanted for years. So. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see. It's not a no. <laughs> and 34-year-old Pierce made pan-fried fillet of turbot, served with cockles and a samphire and Dublin Bay prawn bisque. It's actually very bland, Pierce. And I can't, I can't give it a yes. You could have seasoned the fish more. I, I must admit, I just realised when I brought the plate up that I meant to put some salt on the fish after it came out of the pan. Everything joins together quite well. Yeah, I'd give you a yes. Thank you very much, Don. After messing up like that, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to get a second chance and to hopefully correct my mistakes. After a long day and only five aprons given out, it's the final audition. From Limerick, 37-year-old Mike is hoping his crab spring roll will be enough to secure him the sixth apron. But with two Asian dishes already having failed to pass the test, will he be able to pull it off? Do you cook Asian food a lot? No, no. I do, I do cook Asian food, but it wouldn't be my forte. I don't like to stick with one cuisine. I like to try everything. I was a bit nervous, but I kind of kept him up late having some wine last night. That didn't help, but um, this morning I just, when he came into the sitting room, I put on the Eye of the Tiger song. <laughs> so hopefully I calm his nerves down and hopefully he'll just do what he can do. Mike has made Asian inspired crab spring rolls with pickled ginger. Japanese dipping sauce, and a tempura chai flour. I think it's wonderfully presented. I think the crab tastes really fresh. With the zest that you've put in, you've put in lemon, lime, and orange, and you've really woken it up. I absolutely love the way you worked. I think you're incredibly methodical. I think you're very accurate, um, and a, a, a 10 out of 10 as far as I'm concerned. Big yes for me today. Oh, superb, superb. Nick? I have to say I agree with Dylan. Um, it's wonderfully presented. Mm. It's a beautiful taste. You've done us proud today, it's really good. And it's a definite yes for me. Thanks very so much. Well, Mike. So that only leaves me to give you and hand you one of these coveted aprons and welcome to MasterChef. Thanks very much. Looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Mike. Good choice, well done. Yeah, it's very good. Good day today. Yeah. The winner. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Looking forward to the challenges that come up. Uh, hopefully I'm up for it and I'm capable for it, but I'm looking forward to being able to learn some more and to progress my skills, but I'd love to try to win it. <laughs> it's the end of the first day of auditions and six of Ireland's top amateur cooks have secured their place in the second round. The 
the following morning, and five returning contestants have just one last chance to prove themselves as they compete against each other in the cook-off. It would mean everything to go far in this competition. I'd absolutely love it. It's something I've wanted for years, so hopefully. <laughs> I enjoy my career now, but it doesn't make my heart smile. At least it's a second chance, and I'll do whatever I can to try and get it. This is the, the opportunity I'd say to kickstart me again. Good morning, and welcome to the very first MasterChef Ireland cook-off. Having met all of you yesterday, and having something good to say about each of your dishes, we also found something that, for us, just didn't work. Each one of you divided myself and Dylan. So having thrown you a lifeline, today is the day we really need to see what you can do to win us over. You now have one hour to prepare your chosen dish. So good luck, and your cooking time starts now. In her audition, Anne-Marie cooked a deconstructed beef wellington, but her potatoes were under-seasoned and a reduction runny. Very nervous, you know, there's so much that can go wrong. Like, it's just I have to get my timings right, so very nervous about that, so hopefully it goes okay, you know. However, 20 minutes in, and Dylan spots a major error. The oven was off for the first Does 20 it really? minutes. That is a worry. In his audition, Mark didn't quite balance the flavours of his ambitious lobster three ways. Today I'm going to focus on the dish, getting one dish out perfect, and I'm trying to win that apron, which is the most coveted thing that I've aimed for in my life so far. OK, guys, you are halfway through. You have half an hour left. Twenty-three-year-old Miana, impressed with her flavour combinations, but lacked attention to detail. I don't want to think of anything. I'll just go and do it, and whatever happens, happens. Where will the prawn go? That would be for my decoration. Your decoration. Thirty-four-year-old Pierce presented a great-looking dish, but his lack of seasoning let him down. The lamb is in the oven for the second time now. Obviously, it was very well seasoned first. <laughs> the dish I'm doing today, I'm going to absolutely pack it with flavour and let the judges know that it was just a, a, a silly mistake the last day and that it's not, uh, it's not the way I normally cook. OK, guys, ten minutes to plate your dish or we won't be able to taste it. And 40-year-old Grant served up a busy dish of kangaroo with a wine and cherry sauce. So you're making your bisque? I make my bisque, reducing it slowly. Today's cook is about a second chance to impress the guys. Looking forward to it. Actually, kind of prove to the guys that, look, I, I, I can be a bit more finesse for my cooking. OK, guys, you're now out of time. Please stop cooking. Anne-Marie has made herb-crusted rack of lamb on a bed of tomato and courgette vinaigrette with a side of potatoes boulangere. Nice flavour from the lamb. Um, sauce could have been a bit more sweeter. Lamb's cooked. OK, some of it's a little over, some of it's a little under. Yeah. Potatoes, they're... Uh, Half raw. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're no crust. Yeah. yeah. They're a nightmare. Mark has cooked lobster ravioli in a saffron and parmigiano sauce, garnished with a beetroot pesto. I'm not a fan of the beetroot. I don't think it does anything for it. Oh, an overkill? I, no, it doesn't even. It's just nondescript. However, the cooking of the lobster is... Um, it's nice. Thank you. Tastes very nice. Thank you. Don't think it needed the pesto or the beetroot. OK. But thank you. Thank you. Miana has prepared honey ginger chicken with lemon rice. I was looking for the longest things. Are they there? The prawn? Prawn? No, I haven't got enough time to do them. Okay. So 
Chicken's nicely cooked. The rice is perfect, but slightly too bland. Yeah, the rice is, is very bland. I like the spice. For his dish, Pierce has also made herb-crusted rack of lamb with celeriac mash, sautéed mushrooms, garnished with mustard sprouts. Absolutely love the cooking of your lamb. It's exactly how I like to Thank eat it as well. Thank you very much, Dylan. I love your celeriac mash. Thank you. But I just, I want more sauce. I know, I tried I to get it on sauce. the plate and it was, it was supposed to have more sauce. Seasoning is much better. Thank you. The only thing I would have preferred is a crunchier crust and more sauce. Grant has cooked prawn ravioli in a saffron and prosecco bisque, garnished with salmon roe. I love the flavouring. Mm -hmm. The bisque could have been a bit more richer, mm -hmm. and the presentation could have wowed me more. Oh, absolutely. I'll rush that. I just have to get something on the plate, to be honest with you. You've um, captured the sea mm -hmm. with the roe. Yeah. It's a little bit too, too thin. Yeah. Ravioli needs to be more refined. Mm -hmm. However, the flavour is there. You can taste the herbs coming through and the fresh zest. That's so, what I need. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank you very much. If you can all please leave the MasterChef kitchen. With no more that can be done, the contestants must now wait it out while Nick and Dylan assess their culinary efforts. Marie, I mean. I don't know, I was just really looking forward to those boulanger potatoes. They were just such a disappointment. The rest of the lamb dish was okay, but it's not enough. No, not at this stage of the game. Mark, oh, I mean, it looked pretty, but he did exactly the same again. It's a funny fish, isn't he? Yeah. He definitely tried to simplify it, but at the, again, he snuck in a little bit of complexity here and there that was completely irrelevant and there was no need for it. That's why I let him down. Yeah. Diana, no prawn. I don't think they would have saved it. Oh, the presentation was like a school dinner. There was no salt, it was just a... What I liked about Pierce is he actually came again today with fantastic ingredients, really executed them well. He showed that he could go from here to here. I think he has huge potential and could improve immensely. Grant, another example. He did come back with something simpler. Even though the sauce was a little runny, he did capture the sea. It, it was good. He has the ability, and it's going to be a tough call. Anne-Marie, Miana, and Mark, thank you for your effort. But unfortunately, you will go no further in the competition. Grant and Pierce, myself and Dylan have had a long debate. And we have decided to award only one apron. And the apron goes to Thank you very much. Good attempt. Thank, thanks, Thanks, oh, Thanks very much. <laughs> well, gentlemen, you have fulfilled a dream. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was happy, don't you? Bang on. Bang on. I've just got to the last 16 of MasterChef. I'm still stunned. I'm still sitting here tingling. It'll take surgery to get the smaller for me, to be honest with you. I'm just buzzing. And with the seventh place filled, there are now just nine MasterChef aprons left. Next time on MasterChef. <laughs>
can't believe he came in and did that. Essence of Provence. I should go on the restaurant menu tonight, I think. I'm going to pass. This is definitely something we're looking for for MasterChef. What we tasted was awful. It looks like they were actually dressed up. They let themselves down.